In just a few days, the rules will change for employers who pay their workers minimum wage. Hiking their paychecks is a key pillar of the Liberals' re-election bid next year. And already that has some businesses making changes. Lisa Shing is live out in Leslieville for us tonight. And Lisa, you're at a coffee shop where customers will soon see a difference. Yeah, I'm here at Cafe Tearo on Queen East, Dwight, and I was in here earlier today and saw signs around their till saying as a result of the minimum wage increase that their products would be increasing in price as well come January 1st. Now, minimum wage is not the only change that's going to be taking place uh, come January 1st. Uh, others as well, part-time and temporary workers will also be expected to be paid just as much as staff members uh, doing the same job. Uh, three weeks of vacation uh, time after someone has been with a company for five years and 10 days a year of personal emergency leave with two of those days paid and those are the changes taking effect now I spoke with workers today and they say they're generally happy with these changes I also spoke with a family doctor who tells me over his practice the course of 10 years he's seen more and more workers going in who are being paid minimum wage and suffering from health issues Living on a low income is associated with having a higher rate of anxiety, low mood, uh, stress, and so all of these things contribute to people's mental health, but it's also associated with physical problems, so people have higher rates of chronic diseases. So I hear from my patients that they have a hard time um, affording healthy food, having the time to take care of themselves, exercise, and have difficulty paying rent. Um, and this translates into more stress for them, and it's very hard for them to follow um, any sort of advice we give um, because of really them not having enough uh, in terms of their income. And those chronic illnesses uh, include things like diabetes as well as high blood pressure, and he says that's an overall burden on our health care system. And Lisa, there's also been quite a bit of opposition, though, to this change. Yeah, so the province's financial accountability office said the strain on employers could result in approximately 50,000 job losses. I spoke with the head of the Workers' Action Center today, and she says she doesn't think that's going to happen, citing uh, cases like British Columbia, Seattle as well, who all increased their minimum wage and yet did not see those job losses. And she also mentioned to me that businesses should not be increasing their prices as a result of these changes. I think we all want to support small businesses and I think I certainly want to see the small businesses in my neighborhood thrive, but they're not going to thrive if people don't have money in their pockets, right? If people can't go to your cafe and buy a cup of coffee or if they can't buy their kids another pair of shoes or a piece of clothing, your business is not going to do well. Now, Ladd says her concern, though, is mostly with big corporations who can afford to pay their workers more. Now, we also pose these issues to Labour Minister Kevin Flynn, and he says the impact will largely be positive going forward. Somebody that's earning at the lower end of the spectrum spends that paycheck almost the same day they get it. It goes right to the grocery stores. It goes right to the shoppers' drug marts and to the places where they buy the kids' shoes. It goes to the landlord. It goes, to, it goes right back into the community. Now, the biggest concern for the advocates I spoke with today is how exactly the province will enforce these new regulations going forward. And they both tell me that it's incumbent on the workers themselves to really know their rights and bring their concerns forward. Dwight. Thank you, Lisa.